broad brush this for you. I can't give you spe specifications. I have to broad brush, brush this. I, I can't do anything else. I'm sorry. To be comfortable, fair amount of technology. You're going to need, of course, energy. You're going to need lighting, not just for yourself so you can read, but your animals are going to need lights. Your plants are going to need a certain amount of light. You're going to need air. Look up HEPA filters, H-E-P-A. HEPA filters will filter out most radioactive particles. It will filter out all genetically modified spores from the plants that they're turning against us. Uh, Monsanto, the biggest monsters of all time when it comes to uh, destroying our food supplies. I don't know if a HEPA filter will have any defense against the Raytheon um, gigaflop airborne microscopic computer particles. That I don't know. We'll cover that in, a, in another story once I get over the shock of discovering they've actually done that. You have to deal with waste treatment. Where's the sewage going? Where's the garbage going? How are you going to recycle? Now, and I don't really want to alarm you like, you know, like what we have talked about isn't alarming enough, but there are, you're not going to be alone in the caves. As we've talked about before, the Earth's surface, the Earth's crust, is absolutely honeycombed with caves. And numerous civilizations have gone underground and stayed there because it was smarter than going back onto the surface. So you're going to have, hopefully not, but you might have company. And there's lots of passive devices you can get, you can build, um, that will help you in this. I'm not going to list the website. You'll just have to look it up. Um, in the um, in the blog on our website, the 2012fad.com, and look at this episode number, which is uh, 2011-03-13, and look at the websites there. These are the things that you really need to build and have. Don't really want to get into the dynamics of it. Again, we're broad brushing here. Other things you should have, just common sense stuff, freeze-dried food stuff, tinned food, at least a five-year supply to hold you until your own crops come in, to hold you in case your crops fail at any particular time, just in case. And you also should, you're also going to need to learn how to freeze dry food. Do you know how to tin food? Do you know how to preserve food? You need to know. And you're going to need lots of guns and plenty of ammo and ways to make more gunpowder and to make bullets. Now, little known facts are that if you have a couple of, of electrode plates, and you put them out in the sun, hidden up there in the rocks somewhere where nobody can see them. But they're hitting, they're getting sunlight. If you connect those by cables down into the cave, into the ground, into your planters, your plants will grow without sunlight. Yeah, it's a trick you're not supposed to know. Now, another important thing to have is plenty of pure silver bars and pure, as pure as possible, 0.999, pure round ounces with you, because silver is a natural antibacterial. So when you have those coins, those bars, drop them into your water supply, leave them there. When you're milking your cows, drop at least one silver ounce into every bucket of milk. It will help keep you, um, well, disease-free. So now let's look at uh, the hemisphere. Let's, look at, let's start with the northern hemisphere, the pros and cons. See, in the northern hemisphere, there's going to be a lot of war, radioactive fallout. If some fool pushes a button in the Middle East and launches uh, one or two nuclear missiles, more than likely the other fool will launch theirs as well. That's when the problem starts, and we're not even beginning at that. Smaller countries like Iraq, Iran, have Cobalt-60 retaliation methods. Now, Cobalt-60, as we talked about earlier, when you buy irradiated food, there's probably a place nearby you that irradiates food and you don't even know it's there, but they use cobalt-60 to irradiate your food. When you irradiate food, it kills all of the bacteria, the funguses, the parasites, whatever's in it that causes food to spoil. The problem is it also turns the food into poison. So you may have, in, in Europe here, they have, um, they sell milk in cartons, uh, cardboard cartons, and you keep it at room temperature for months at a time. That's great. It looks like milk, it tastes like milk, but it's actually just basically poison. But, you know, if you need it for your coffee, what are you going to do? 
all that radioactive fallout from the missiles and from the cobalt-60 because Middle Eastern countries know how to take cobalt-60, grind it into a powder, treat it, and then all they have to do is when they hear that their country's been attacked, they're in London, they're in Rome, they're in Paris, they're in New York, and they hear that their countries have been attacked in the Middle East, they take this powder, this cobalt-60 powder, and they just walk around cities and spread it. Or they go to the New York, uh, the Empire State Building, and they just throw it over the edge. And this is where all your favorite zombie movies become real life. Because cobalt-60 poisoning will melt your brain. And you will degenerate very, very quickly, but not before you become insane. Again, go to rents.com, R-E-N-S-E. Look up Tim Refat, R-I-F-A-T. The man is a genius. He understands this. So in the Northern Hemisphere, we have the problem of radioactive fallout. Now, you can prevent a lot of the effects of radiation poisoning by having fresh supplies, by growing your own um, corella and spirulina. Now, these are both single-celled plants that are very easy to grow in a pool of water. But you need to know how. You need a book. They're both natural detoxifiers. They're good for what they call chelation. Chelation basically means in your body, they bind with the radioactive material and they get expelled when you go to the toilet. Um, basically, it gets radioactive particles out of your body. You should be able to find how-to books on how to grow corella and spirulina. They do it in India. Uh, small villages grow uh, these two as cash crops. So do that. Um, if you know anything about um, working with salt water, frankly, seaweed is better at doing this, but in the mountains you're going to require energy, pumps, a balanced ecosystem. And again, I put a reference on our blog for uh, this episode you can look up. Again, this is a broad brush. I'm sorry. I can't give you endless minute detail. I just can't do it. You pay me a couple million bucks, I'll build it for you because I got all the notes. <laughs> now one fellow asked me about surviving in New Mexico and I have to be honest I can't see it. It's got flat land, water will move easily over that, it's relatively close to a major ocean and it's surrounded by faults. Now that said, there is on the other hand the fact that many civilizations have survived past events in the caves of the Grand Canyon. My own people, the Hopi, came out of the Grand Canyon uh, 10,000 years ago. If you're going to be in that part of the world, check out the Grand Canyon. No promises because the water's going to get there. Now today there are other civilizations that are still in the desert floors, under the floors of Southern California, completely underground, out in the desert. But you know, you're talking about a huge amount of technology. That if it's just you, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, and a few others, you're not going to be able to afford that. Or even if you could, you wouldn't know what to do it or how to do it. So that's tough. Okay, other options in the Northern Hemisphere. Central Europe. Find a country that's surrounded by mountains. Find caves. Try to be in the middle of the continent. Try to be away from major bodies of water. Try to be in a culture that is basically farm-based, that has no foreign debt. We found one here in Europe, we're there, we're building the village there. But I can't invite you unless you have money because unfortunately it comes down to money. I can't help you unless we have the cash. I'm sorry. But this is truth time. Other locations in the Southern Hemisphere, South America. Now the good thing about being close to the South Pole is all the Earth's new water, new air, new oil, basically, comes out of the South Pole. So all that air flows north and so keep all the radiation in the Northern Hemisphere. Problem is, again, you're next to the South Pole. And when all that ice, when the planet flips and all that ice moves into the ocean, there's going to be a wave. Well, that wave is going to be so tall and so big and moving so fast, it's actually going to circumnavigate the Earth several times. Now, there are lots of Europeans in South America. And so you could probably find folks who think, you know, as we do. There's a whole community in Ecuador of foreigners built up there. I believe it's uh, Mr. George Green. Look up George Green in Ecuador. He's a very...